It's funny. And I don't know if anyone else gets this, but whenever I talk about Amy Rose, be that in video or anywhere online really, I always get a nervous flutter in my chest, palms starting to sweat just as that familiar lump begins to form in my throat. And before your mind continues down that rabbit hole of assumption it's just dived into, I can only wish it was for the reasons you're thinking. Trust me, that would... that would make my life so much easier. But the real reason for the nauseous waves of anxiety I experience whenever I talk about the rosiest of all rascals? Well, you know the way the Sonic fanbase is split on... Jesus, pretty much everything? Yeah. See, many fans have a love-hate relationship with Amy. And then, subsections of those fans have love-hate relationships with the subsections of Amy herself from the past 30 years. And that's to say nothing of her comic or cartoon appearances. To say the least, it's a rich fucking tapestry. And like everything else in the series, we all tend to have vastly different ideas about the purpose Amy should serve and what's best for her character going forward. But love her or hate her, there's simply no denying just how hugely important she is to the series. Amy Rose is one of the longest standing characters in Sonic's universe. And sure, her motivations and overall importance to the story can vary quite a bit from game to game, her dominant character traits alternating between a compassionate down-to-earth young lady and an obsessive fangirl, but the amazing highs of her rollercoaster existence far outweigh the lows. And of all the awesome moments for her character were ever truly built upon and made consistent, I honestly think Amy could have been right up there with the likes of Shadow in terms of success in the series. Being the primary female lead, the consequences of getting her so consistently wrong really isn't a good look for proper representation in the series. I mean, if I was a girl playing these games, I'd be wondering why I'm so often represented as either inconsequential or defined entirely by simping over the protagonist. I mean, sure, there's Rouge or Blaze, the handful of times they were around, but thankfully, I think there's plenty in Amy's past that could be used to turn her into something truly special. And in this video, we're going to analyze her character and motivations across the mainline game series to give credit where it's due to how important Amy has been and could easily be again in the future. As always, don't forget to throw a like on the video if you find yourself enjoying it, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and smash that bell icon with your brightly colored Pico hammer to get notified when new videos are live. But for now, I think it's best we don't keep our main lady waiting. I am... Um, I don't think we like her when she's mad. Amy Rose made her grand debut in Sonic CD all the way back in 93. Well, strictly speaking, she made her debut in the manga by Kenji Tirada, but Sonic CD would be her first appearance in the game series. The main purpose for the character was to serve as the Minnie Mouse of the Sonic series. But you see, Mickey openly loves Minnie, and Sega weren't all that eager for Sonic to be tied down in a relationship, maintaining that this wouldn't gel with his carefree, married to the wind attitude. So the compromise was that Amy would instead have a one-way infatuation with the blue hero, and the romantic awkwardness we all love hate today was born. It's revealed to Amy through a tarot card reading, yep, she's into that, that she's destined to meet the world-renowned hunky hero Sonic the Hedgehog on Little Planet. So when it appears above Never Lake on the last month of the year, this timid young girl sets out for her meeting with Destiny. I guess if you just go and do the thing that's predicted, it comes through. And people tell you this stuff isn't real. When Amy finally does meet Sonic, she is immediately love-stricken, getting super handsy with him whenever she gets the chance, and dictated by maybe the first ever mandate in the series. Sonic doesn't seem to be on board with this, breaking free of her iron grip to get back to the important things, like saving Little Planet from Robotnik. But when Amy is then captured by Metal Sonic, even though he doesn't share her feelings, Sonic still sets out to rescue her, saving a booty he has no intent on tapping. What a guy. And after beating Metal in a super awesome mega race, he rescues Amy before going on to put a stop to Robotnik. In the end, with Robotnik defeated, and the mysterious planet now safe from danger, Sonic returns Amy safely to Earth, making a quick getaway before she can fucking pin him to the floor. 
In a nutshell, Amy pretty much played the damsel in distress in CD, and like Metal, really served as more of a side quest than anything else. Which is a bit of a shame, but also not very surprising. This was the typical role for a female character in most franchises aimed at young boys in the 90s. She joins a host of many other famous examples, and is now probably as recognisable as any of them. The introduction of her character was based around that one-way love interest, helping big up Sonic as a superstar in his universe, while also acknowledging his creator's vision that Sonic is just too cool to slow down for relationships. And for what it was, Amy served her purpose really well. Great for Sonic, but perhaps not so great for her. It would take a few years, but things would start to improve in a big way for Amy. In Sonic Adventure 1, Amy would go on to receive a huge boost in notoriety, snagging herself a starring role as a playable character with her very own story. She also would receive a complete makeover for this well-deserved time in the spotlight, pretty much a head-to-toe redesign, with Amy's age now raised from 8 to 12, was obviously to make the character more feminine, while also making her crush on Sonic, who's 15, a bit less creepy. While I did really like her old tomboy design, it was the first one I ever seen, so I'll always have a soft spot for it, her new design does wonders to tidy up her overall appearance, with a consistent complementary colour scheme that would turn her into one of the most easily recognisable characters in the series. And I was more used to her from Fleetway Sonic the Comic than anywhere else, so I was already more than used to her constantly changing outfits and getting design touch-ups. Her classic design was great, but this one definitely helps give Amy her own identity, as she no longer just looks like Girl Sonic, and that can only be a good thing. Amy's story opens with her talking about being bored with civilian life, daydreaming about her adventures with Sonic as she walks home from yet another mundane shopping trip in Station Square. No clue that a tiny encounter is about to send her spiralling into a web of events directly connected to her blue hero. I guess there might be more to that Destiny stuff than I gave it credit for. Upon her fateful encounter with a flicky in danger, Amy decides without hesitation to help it, ducking in to a nearby restaurant to avoid the Eggman robot that's pursuing it. It's only a couple of minutes in, and we're already seeing how kind and selfless Amy is, putting herself in harm's way without a second thought, just to help a perfect stranger. As luck or destiny would have it, Amy catches Sonic passing by, and tries to have him protect the Flicky. Sonic, bless him, fails spectacularly at hiding his discomfort at the mere presence of this feisty pink hedgehog. Trying his best to refuse, his stuttering and blubbering does nothing to stop Amy dragging him along to Twinkle Park. In her mind, a date. In his mind, no! I always see this as the battle Amy is dealing with in this game. Every time she gets distracted by Sonic, it's the worst possible showing for her character, suddenly trying to offload someone she took responsibility for onto him, just in the hopes that she can then spend more time with him. Sure, you could argue it's like, say, a citizen going to the police for help, Amy going to a known hero or whatever, but her serious tunnel vision just really isn't a good look often making her far more one-dimensional and dependent on Sonic, when in reality she has a lot to give herself. And when she's once again separated from Sonic and captured by Eggman, that fact just becomes all the more obvious. When confronted by E-102 Gamma, demanding she hand over the bird she's been protecting, Amy bravely and steadfastly refuses, without a second thought about what that might mean for her. She doesn't know this, but Gamma has his own internal struggle going on, and when Amy listens to him speak, learning that he has no idea why he's doing what he's doing, she actually takes pity on it, mindlessly taking orders without question like a slave. And when she asks him those tough questions about feelings and emotions, it forces Gamma to do some inward reflection, in the end choosing to set Amy and the bird free. I've actually done a second video covering all this from Gamma's perspective, so be sure to check that out when you can. But that ability to just talk around a robot into doing the right thing, appealing to something deep inside that she can sense is still there and knows the right thing, that's a really special ability she has. It's beautiful, it's subtle, and it's pretty much the polar opposite of all the negative sides of her character. And I always laugh at this because it makes me think, okay, the most special thing about Amy is her kind and caring attitude. Her subtle ability to see the good in people while also helping those people see it themselves. And then they give her a fucking hammer as a weapon. Subtle as a hammer. 
perhaps the most accurate description of Amy. As she leaves, she lets Gamma know he has good inside him, and that the next time they meet, it will be as friends. It isn't long before that's put to the test either, as when Eggman corners her on the deck of the egg carrier, stealing the emerald the bird was hiding, he then sends Gamma in to finish off the intruders, and we get to see yet another fantastic character trait for Amy. Her loyalty. Even though it means going against Sonic, the person who probably matters most to her, she steps between him and Gamma, insisting that the robot be spared. Not only convincing Sonic to back down, but also convincing Gamma to turn on Eggman, setting him on his own mission of redemption. As the game goes on, Amy starts to realize that she's far too dependent on Sonic for everything, deciding that from now on, she's gonna be more independent. And what better way to do that than by helping others? going out of her way again to unite the bird with its family. And when the only obstacle to that goal is Zero, the robot that's been tormenting her from the very beginning, Amy has finally had enough of running. Displaying her newfound confidence, she fights and destroys Zero by herself, watching with joy and a new sense of pride as the family of birds are reunited. Her newfound confidence is now bubbling at the surface, and she seems to have finally gotten over that naive notion that a romantic relationship with Sonic would just happen. Yes, she still has strong feelings for him, but for now, she's just happy to work towards gaining his respect. After that, who knows? The impact of Amy's story on the overall plot is far more subtle than most others. Most of the great things she accomplishes goes completely unnoticed by everyone turning Gamma against Eggman, protecting an innocent bird and reuniting it with its family, but it does hold huge importance for her as a character. Compared to her frame of mind at the beginning, Amy is no longer dumbfounded by Sonic's mere presence, making some huge strides towards being more independent and figuring out how to have other priorities in her life, discovering her own inner strengths while helping others find theirs protecting innocent creatures because she knows it's the right thing to do. Instead of merely being a fangirl for Sonic, she's now actually exhibiting his heroic traits. Except for her, this is an even bigger deal. Amy doesn't really have any special abilities or powers like everyone else. No super speed, strength, or power of flight. Yet she throws herself in harm's way to help others time and time again. And that's far more admirable than someone with a better means of protecting themselves doing the same thing. Amy's story in this game betrays her as kind, loyal, and brave. Even standing up to the love of her life to protect an unlikely friend. She still has a thing for Sonic. But by the end, that isn't what defines her anymore. Without a doubt, Amy grew as a character in this game. But the important question is, would that growth last? When Sonic Adventure 2 came along, for a myriad of reasons that were no fault of her own, Amy was downgraded to a supporting role. This game had many moving parts right up to completion, with rumors, tales, and even Shadow were initially not going to be playable. But as well as Amy no longer being playable, there's also some slight regression of her character, as she once again leans into her infatuation with Sonic. Spending most of the game following the group around like a lost puppy, with little opportunity to contribute anything herself. She does still have some marginally important moments, like sneaking into Prison Island to free Sonic. But the biggest saving grace for Amy in this game, considering how much her presence is paired back versus Adventure 1, is that her caring personality and ability to appeal to the good in people is still well and truly there. And similar to how she got through to Gamma, she manages convincing Shadow to help the good guys by first helping him unlock his true memories. One of the most important narrative moments in the whole game. For the story, for her, and for Shadow. It's a real shame that this is the only opportunity she gets to shine. Pretty much every other character in Sonic Adventure 2 had excellent character progression, all growing since their appearances in Sonic Adventure 1. But to be honest, if they were legitimately unable to think of a way to give her a more meaningful role in this game, then it's probably for the best things ended up the way they were. She definitely could have been written a little better. Have no fear! Amy Rose is here! Maybe even given some tasks to do off-screen if they didn't want to make her playable. But cramming in anything more for her without a proper reason risks her being there just for the sake of it. The very thing we criticize the current games for. So I can try and understand on an objective level why Amy had a smaller role in this game, but it's still a shame for her. Sonic Adventure 2 was kinda where Amy's overnight success hit its first bump in the road. 
She came across as a kind and caring person, if a little annoying at times, and her character did stall a bit. But honestly, outside of a few iffy lines, there was nothing unfixable here. Nothing unfixable, yet Amy didn't escape that weird reset that most characters suffered in Sonic Heroes. Tails lost his confidence and demonstrable intelligence, Knuckles lost a connection to his role as Guardian of Angel Island, Shadow lost his memory. And of course, Amy would revert even further into the role of crazy Sonic fangirl. Her main priority to find Sonic and continue forcing herself on him. Sonic, this time there's no way out of marrying me. Marry me. Bitches be crazy. Oh, seriously though, if Amy was the guy and Sonic was the girl, that bitch be cancelled by now, that's all I'm saying. And for some reason, for a lot of Amy fans, the hero's depiction doesn't bother them at all. They actually defend it, making the argument that this obsessive and damaging one-dimensional characterization is actually just irony. A big joke. All the while blowing the 5% of her that isn't just chasing Sonic up to be more than it really is. But it's exactly because I'm such a big fan of Amy, and I know exactly how awesome her character used to be and the untapped height she still could have reached, that I flat out refuse to just let that shit fly. Amy's primary goal in this game should have only been about clearing Sonic's name. And if people are going to make the argument that this is already the case, then it really should have been explicitly communicated this way. You know, in dialogue. Because all I'm seeing is a lot of... I can't let my Sonic get away! With her personal stake being clearing Sonic's name, rather than just constantly trying to pin him down, her helping Cheese and Big find their friends would have gone a long way towards reinforcing that kind and caring side of her from earlier games. You know, leaning into something that doesn't make her look insane. I know, crazy, right? But instead, they gleefully ditch all of her character development from the adventure games and embrace the fangirl. Well, good sir or madam, I say to that, Flanderization. Yep, there's that goddamn word on my channel again. Like pretty much everyone else, Amy was no exception to this process. That one thing she was known for at one point, that now is her character. Doesn't matter that she grew to be much more than that already. Flick of a switch and that's that. We begin to see early signs of Amy's character barreling towards the aggressive and irrational nonsense that would plague the meta era giving Cream the stink eye for doubting her relationship with Sonic, throwing hands with the man himself in the hopes of beating him down the aisle. People can argue that this is all great and successfully achieves a comedic effect, but comedy versus annoying? That really isn't a positive conversation to have around someone's character. Heroes itself is a great game, one of my favourites in the series, but its overall shift in narrative spelled only bad things for Amy. Surprisingly, she would go on to be much better in 06 and Unleashed. No, she isn't fully playable again, or suddenly super important to the narrative, but I really enjoy her dealings with Silver, developing a friendship with him before having to throw herself between him and Sonic, once again demonstrating her ability to appeal to the good in people, causing Silver to begin doubting his whole mission, before going on to brave the end of the world to help revive Sonic. She's dropped the pure crazy persona and is a lot more kind than down to earth. And this would remain the case for Unleashed. She's kind and caring to everyone she meets and eager to help in any small way she can. For me, this will always be preferable to her appearance in Heroes. But it's still a bit irritating that her character is once again spinning its wheels in the mud of Sonic Team's indecision. There was clearly no real ideas on how to progress her. And that theory is made all the more plausible in the years that followed. The shakeup in staffing at Sonic Team, more specifically the writers, would see Amy's character pretty much destroyed in the modern era of Sonic games, once again leaning heavily into her crazy and possessive fangirl side, lashing out at anyone who dares criticize Sonic, and displaying a shameless thirst for attention from the blue hunk himself. That flanderization process may have taken a brief respite after Heroes, but make no mistake, it returns with a vengeance in the so-called meta era. You would think that after nearly three decades, Sonic Team might have come up with even a basic idea for her character, but you'd be wrong. Or that they might at least figure out that a lot of us are bored of this dynamic now. Nah. Over the past 12 or so years, we've been treated like we have the memory of a goldfish, in need of constant reminders in each new game on just how into Sonic Amy is. I'm pretty sure we get it, guys. Uh, that's plenty.
At her best, Amy was a character who was never afraid to stand up for what she believed in. A girl with an unbreakably strong will, an optimist that believes in everyone and can always see the best in them. She could be sassy, funny, an all-round charming person that I was always eager to watch on her own merits. So why not lean into this? Make her love for Sonic secondary, so secondary it barely has to be communicated, and allow Amy as her own person to come to the forefront. The audience doesn't need constant reminding about how much she's got the hots for Sonic. There doesn't need to be two opposing sides of her. The annoying, chasing Sonic everywhere like a lost puppy side, or the caring, compassionate and fearless girl who always helps people whenever they need it side. Can we not just let her be that second one and happen to have a crush on Sonic? A crush that doesn't define her and isn't smashed into her faces the whole time she's on screen? Please? There's a reason so many people like her more down-to-earth and laid-back boom depiction. And the rest of that series is what it is, it certainly isn't my thing, but Amy was actually done really well in that universe. Same could be said for her in IDW. Point is, there's plenty of examples of Amy being successful and working as a character on an individual level. Give her a chance to shine in a meaningful role, with a purpose that actually matters in the story, and I'm 100% sure she would be received positively. As I said earlier, the introduction of her character and that one-way love interest at Sonic, that was great for helping give Sonic that superstar status in his universe, while still honoring his creator's vision that Sonic is just too cool for relationships. He's all about the thrill of adventure and helping anyone in need, seeking out trouble to put a stop to wherever he can find it. But that shit is well and truly redundant now, on both sides. Amy doesn't need to be one-dimensional anymore just to give Sonic some rep. He saved the planet a million times over, well known by the highest governing bodies on the planet. And on the flip side, yeah, this dynamic might have been funny at the beginning. Girl chases boy, boy runs away. But 30 years on, it's really gotten to the point where Sonic now has to be an obnoxious asshole just to rebuff Amy's increasingly obnoxious advances. This isn't needed anymore. As things stand, Amy and Sonic kind of bring out the worst in each other a lot of the time. Amy is a much better person and grows more as a character when she's not laser focused on Sonic. And in turn, Sonic is happier and more easygoing when Amy's not constantly trying to pin him down. That's a pretty shitty dynamic when you actually stop to think about it, and really not what I think Sega was going for. They just seem to have backed themselves into this ridiculous corner, with no real thought about how the relationship actually looks from the outside in. Amy needs to be separated from Sonic, even if just for a bit, teamed up and put into situations with other characters. When not obsessing over Sonic, I really liked her relationship with Cream and Big, and her time with Silver was also interesting. Definitely a team-up opportunity I'd like to see explored further. Give her an opportunity to create her own dynamic with people, instead of always having her relate to them solely through that Sonic lens. The Fleetway comics did a fantastic job at this. She had her own circle of friends, was skilled with a variety of weapons, and could fend for herself. These varied situations and independent relationships with other characters gave her a chance to come out of her shell. She was clever, witty, and a force to be reckoned with in her own right. A new circle of friends and motivations besides just Sonic exclusively is a great way to give Amy her own identity, just as I'm convinced would have been the case if her growth continued after Sonic Adventure. This is usually the point in the video where I lament about how Amy's future lies totally at the whims of Sonic Team and that without the will for change on their part, she's probably doomed to remain a Flanderized shell of her once great self. Just like I've said for pretty much every other supporting character. Something to pull out to check a box. Or indeed, just plaster on the box. A shallow effort to placate fans of those characters and, you know, sell more copies. But, for the longest time, I really never thought this would be something I'd actually get to say. We now actually have good reason to be more optimistic about the outlook for these characters. Sonic Frontiers has the potential to reignite the spark of these once great characters. Whether it be Azuka-san himself confirming that the story will be less comedic and focused on the mystery, or the fact that Pontaf is no more and Ian Flynn is now writing. The potential is there for this game's story to be truly special, and revive a fantastic cast long thought dead. The jury may still be out on gameplay, and sure, we don't have a solid list of exactly who will turn up, but my point is, we finally have a reason to be excited again. A reason to think that the so-called meta era may finally be over. 
a reason to believe that this franchise may be returning to what made a lot of us fall in love with it in the first place. The character of Amy Rose is a well of untapped potential, a flame that was snuffed out just as it was shining brightest. And with the rumoured story beats for Frontiers, it's nice to think that she might once again have her time to shine, even if it did take 23 years. But I think I've rambled on enough. Now I'd love to hear what you guys think. Which depiction of Amy has always been your favourite? Which version of her do you like least and think has done the most damage to her character? And do you think Frontiers has the potential to bring her back to her former glory? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you find yourself enjoying the content and are wondering how you can support the channel, liking and subscribing are huge. You can also join the channel Discord server or follow me on Twitter. You'll find links to all of those in the description. And for any of you who want to go a bit further, you can do a super thanks on a video or head on over to Patreon and become a supporter. There's multiple tiers and benefits on there, starting for as little as a dollar. You even get your name shown at the end of my videos. Obviously, there's zero pressure or expectations from me. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. But for now, a big thank you for watching. And as always, guys, take care.